What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, coming at you with another late night review. Um, obviously Atlanta United versus LA Galaxy. Gotta love these West Coast late night games. Fantastic. So obviously I'm very tired, um, but I'm going to rush through this pretty quickly. 2-0 uh, win, very good result. A couple of the big points that I want to take out of this though are, first of all, I mean, good attacking play overall. We dominated most of the game, created a lot of really good chances, probably should have finished more. Uh, that would be my biggest criticism of the game, is just the lack of finishing. But, I mean, defensively, looked solid. They did have a few chances, but we defended all those chances very well. And, I mean, not that LA Galaxy is the best team. You know, I knew going into the game that if we did end up not winning the game, it would probably be pretty disappointing just because Galaxy are not the best team. Uh, but with Zlatan coming in, I mean, they have been looking better attacking-wise but they were never really able to get it going. So we did well enough to keep them from getting their groove that they just recently found. Um, so I think that's, it really shows that we are growing as a team. You know, we're growing defensively, we're getting better doing that part of it. Because um, attacking has always been something we do very well, but defensively we haven't always looked our best. So to see that in this game, keep a clean sheet was great to see. Um, as far as the referees are concerned, because obviously I talk about them, my god. I mean, it's no wonder that people from other countries look at our league and go, what a joke. Because we we have the worst referees in the world. We have to. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the inconsistency is mind-boggling. How Zlatan can stand five yards in front of the ball... And then Parkhurst gets yellow carded because he's not taking the free kick when, hello, he's right in front of the ball. That should be a card. And then Williams does the same thing, and it's a card for Williams. How is that a card for us, and then that is also a card for us? It's like the exact same thing happened, but two different people got the card. <laughs> You know, it, it's weird that one thing can be a card and then the other thing will be a card for the person that's... I, I just get so frustrated. The fact that Kitchen was still on the field after his, like, five fouls. I mean, it, the first foul was terrible. It should have been, like, a yellow and you go into another stupid foul, you're done. And then he just... Another foul, another foul, another foul. Still on the field. What's his name? Number 16. I don't even remember his name. Gets a yellow card. And then pulls back Martinez, puts him off as Martinez has a chance to break into goal. Not much of a foul, but that's stopping a chance on goal. Second yellow, you're off. But no, nothing. And then near the end of the game, I'm watching as all of these LA Galaxy players are just descent, 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 descent. No cards. They ended the game with those two yellow cards for the bad challenges in the first half. Those are the only two yellows they got. We ended up with like six, and maybe two of them were deserved. Miguel's, possibly because it was from behind, and then, uh, no, never mind, there was only, that was the only one that was actually deserved. The rest of them, for stupid stuff. Referee, oh, you should take the free kick even though he's standing five yards away from you. Yellow card. Oh, you need to move out of the way of the ball. Yellow card. Oh, he fell down really hard. Yellow card! It's stupid stuff. So, really frustrated with the referee, mainly for that part of it. You know, as far as the fouls that were being called, it was pretty much 50-50. Sometimes it was a foul, sometimes it wasn't, but the yellow cards are what really pissed me off because those accumulate. You know, those, those can really hurt us down the line. So, really frustrated there. Um... As far as our individual play is concerned, uh, once again, love the lineup, love the formation. The formation is really just giving us the space to play, and it really brings the best out of some of our players. Uh, Brad and Goal obviously did well, made some really good saves. Uh, the biggest one had to be, honestly, the one that wouldn't have counted because the guy was offsides, because looking back at the replay, there was a chance if he had scored off of it, he might have been called onside. Uh, but it was the one-on-one, -on -one and, you know, he made the double save, made the first block, bounces, guy takes a shot, saves that one too. Because, I mean, yeah, he's called off sides, but you still have to make the save, and he did. That's huge. Um, because with VAR, they make the call, 
and then he finishes, and then they look back and say, oh, no, he was actually onside. I mean, then they can go back and reverse it and say, no, 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 never mind, goal. So that's, honestly, it was probably the biggest save of the game. Aside from that, you know, he did have to make a few routine saves, nothing major. Uh, the biggest problem, again, for me was distribution wasn't great. So uh, in, in the defense, <sighs> Perez, such a mixed bag. You know, because defensively, he's definitely gotten better. He's improved from where he was, had a good game against NYCFC, had a good game here as well. However, on the ball, <laughs> he's so frustrating because he will just give it away in the stupidest ways possible. You know, bad passes, cross field balls to absolutely no one. I just, we're keeping possession, keeping possession, knocking it around in the back, and then it goes to him, and I just tense up because I never know what's go- what he's going to do. You know, oh, is he going to cross it to absolutely nobody and start their counterattack? Oh, is he going to give a terrible back pass to Guzan, who has to then clear it out of bounds because he nearly gives him a goal? So, I defensively, he's doing okay, but God, on the ball, he's got to improve because we can't keep having these little back passes that barely make it back. Um, Michael in the middle, once again, best defender we have. You know, just really, he's solid, he's smart, he's very good on the ball. To have to deal with a striker like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, I mean, that's a difficult challenge, and he stood up to it. He did very well. Um, really, really showing that he's our he's our best defensive player. Um, maybe second only to Jeff, but we'll talk about him in a second. Chris McCann, once again, doing a very good job back there. I love the fact that he stepped in, taking over that role very well. Uh, he does a very good job stepping into the midfield to make challenges. Uh, which is something that Perez does very well, too. I love the fact that they love to get up and make those challenges because sometimes you see they make a pass in the midfield and nobody really puts a challenge in, um, and that can really hurt a team whenever you're not having your defender step out and put pressure on someone and let them turn and run at you. So both Perez and McCann have done a very good job of stepping in there and making those challenges. So they're doing a very good job there, but the big thing from Chris is He's not scared to get forward and to help out in the attack, but he also works back. He does both sides of it very well. Um, and in my opinion, I think he even sends in a better ball than Greg does. And so I would like to see them try to utilize that a bit more. You know, Greg takes the ball in field. Chris does the overlapping run, lay it off to him, have him send in the cross. Because he does it so much better than Greg. And nothing against Greg or anything, but that's just not one of his strong suits. He doesn't cross the ball very well. Um, so just something to think about going forward. As far as our wing backs are concerned, you know, Greg did play well defensively, caught out a couple times, but I do think part of that was down to the fact that we're not really, we didn't really play with the typical front three that we normally have. Um, and I think I, I talked a little bit about this in the New York game as well. I feel like we don't play with that three of, you know, Miguel and Tito in behind Joseph. It hurts us defensively because most of the time they'll drop back and help out. But in this game, you have Ezekiel and Joseph up there, and both of them are hanging out. And so now your wing backs are a bit more isolated, you know, one-on-one. So I do think that's where it really does hurt us the most whenever we play with more two up top or we play more like, you know, one striker and one in behind. I think it just hurts us because we don't have that one player, whether it's Miguel dropping back to help Greg or Tito dropping back to help uh, Julian. We don't have that anymore whenever we take them out of the, whenever we change our formation up there a little bit. So um, that's where we were really hurt the most were the, the wing play. They get it out wide. Thankfully, the distribution into the middle wasn't good enough today, and that's really what kept them from getting many good chances. Um, but I do think. Greg was left exposed a few times, as was Julian. Um, and honestly, you know, Julian, he's not a defensive player in the first place. So you expose him, it leaves him even more exposed, I guess. But as far as he's concerned, I do think, once again, did his job well enough. Uh, definitely an improvement from what we saw against New York City. And I do think a lot of that was down to the fact that we did have enough space to get him uh, finding the ball out wide. And that's not something he had against New York City. He didn't have time and space out wide. So I'm, I'm glad that we did manage to find him in a bit, in a bit more space because it created more attacking opportunities for us. Um, so 
I think that is mainly where he thrives, is in the space. Whenever you put a lot of pressure on him, whenever you close him down, he's not as effective. So I hope we can continue to find him the space that he needs because we do need him to perform out there. Into the middle, Darlington and Jeff once again holding down the midfield. Um, Jeff obviously doing the more defensive work. Darlington doing more of the attacking work. He is so quick on the ball to turn and find that space. Once again, how is he not playing there for the national team? That is his natural position. That is where you can tell he was born to play. Um, so I just don't, I don't understand why we don't look at that at the national team. I know why. It's because Michael Bradley plays there, and for some reason he's untouchable at the national level. But watching Darlington play in the midfield, just he needs to play there for the national team. Jeff, very good defensively, you know, very strong. Once again, picking up those balls in the midfield where it looks like they might have a chance to counter, but then he steps in and wins it, shuts it down. Um, so love having a player like that in there. And then the front three, Miguel played a little bit deeper, and then Ezekiel and Joseph were kind of a bit higher. I don't, I'm not going to say Ezekiel was a, a striker. He was more of an attacking mid, but it was like Miguel would drop deep, Ezekiel would drop just in behind Joseph, and then Joseph would try to make the runs across, um, sometimes checking to Pete. To, to Pete, to Pete. Uh, so, yeah, I think it did work in this game, but defensively is where we did hurt the most. Like I said, Ezekiel not dropping in defensively, it hurts us. So, as far as their performance, though, Miguel, obviously, very good game. Just picking up the ball, finding the space. Uh, the passes probably need to come a bit quicker from all of them, not just Miguel. All three of them needed to pass a bit quicker. Uh, but as far as, you know, on the ball, Miguel looks the best, and he probably is our best player uh, when it comes to being on the ball. So I just love the quick turn, finding space, getting his legs open, and just finding that room to run. Um, Ezekiel looked pretty good whenever he was moving the ball, but sometimes he didn't do it quick enough, and that's where we got hurt the most in the second half is when he started to slow down on his passing. You know, it felt like pick up the ball, take a look, and then get crunched by a tackle. Um, his best plays came from when he picked his head up early, saw what was ahead of him, gets the ball, and then plays it. He does it very well. I mean, his passes are intricate. They're very, very well-timed. But when it's too slow, he gets closed down, and he doesn't have time, and he's not strong enough to hold off uh, somebody from getting the ball. So I just I think he's the type of player where he needs to play a certain way, and if he doesn't have the time to, he may not be as effective. I think we saw that a bit against New York City last week. So looked pretty good today, but I think there's room for improvement. I do hope he will improve. And then Joseph, I'm still a little bit frustrated with him. You know, there are games like this one where I feel like he's not working as hard as he could or he's doing some stupid stuff on the ball. And I do think he's one of those strikers where when he's on his game, he's fantastic. But when he's not on his game, he's missing penalty kicks. He's missing easy balls where he chests it and then takes a wild swing at it instead of just passing it into the corner. Or ball comes in, great cross, and he kicks it right at the keeper, even though the keeper is rooted to his spot. So I just think he had one of those games where he just was not effective. Um, glad he got the goal. Hopefully that helps his attitude a bit, you know, coming off the field with a goal instead of coming off the field without without one. But uh, there's there has to be something where when you see he's not in the mood, when you see he's having a game like he has had the past two games, you got to make a change. you got to do something. Either change up the formation to suit him more or get him off the field. But God, I can't stand watching him when he's in the mood like he is today. You know, just the lack of effort, the stupid decisions, you know, it, it gets frustrating. So, um, but the one thing that I will say he did well today is he didn't completely shut off. You know, he did work um, to win the ball back sometimes. And that's, he didn't always do it, but I have seen games like last week where it feels like when he shuts off, he just completely shuts off. He's not working for anything. Unless the ball comes to him, he's not moving. Today, he actually did move, um, but then it was kind of the after product wasn't really there. As far as the subs that came on, uh, once again, they're coming on a bit too late for me, but in my opinion, they're all good subs. First one, Kevin comes on for Joseph, a uh, bit bit more defensive player you know he's a he is an attack minded player but he does the defensive work very well and he keeps possession very well too so I thought that was a good decision and he came on 
look pretty good. Romario comes on for Ezekiel after that. Um, I thought that honestly probably should have been our first or second, or you know, he, he probably should have been one of the first ones on, or the first one on, just because I feel like we were dumping the ball forward a lot, and I think with his big body, he can help us out with that. So, but I do think you know him coming on, he works very hard. He wasn't very effective today, but I think we need to give him some more time. I think he needs more time on the field to really start producing. Because he has the, the talent, he has the ability, the physical capabilities to do it. But if he's not getting the time on the field, then he's not really going to get the time needed to improve as a player. Um, so I, I do wish Tata would give him some more time on the field. I know you don't want to take Joseph off, but maybe give him some time as like a second striker. You know, drop Joseph a bit deeper, because I, I do think that could be effective. Um and then the last one was Salzy, so it comes on for Julian Gressel. And at that point, one, waste time, and two, he's a bit more defensive than Julian is. You know, it, it does make sense. I'm still not really a fan of Sal. He hasn't done anything that made me think, yes, I want him on the field. Uh, but he hasn't, I guess, aside from preseason, he hasn't really done anything that made has made me think, oh, I don't want him on the field at all. So he's come on a couple substitutions and has done okay. Um, so, you know, all three subs look good enough uh overall you know the the play looked good it looks like a solid performance but the one caveat that i will say is that the galaxy are not one of the best teams that we're going to face they're probably i would say about halfway um so obviously the clean sheet is a big part of this we're still working out our tactics still trying to figure out where certain players fit um namely going forward so our attacking play is still kind of finding its rhythm as far as the finishing product. All the build-up play is there. The defensive work is there. Now we just need to find that final ball that ends up getting us the goal. Uh, so overall, you know, very pleased. We have a lot of momentum going into the game next week, and that's good to see. You know, six games unbeaten. We're going back home against Montreal, who have looked pretty weak this season so far. That's recipe for success in my opinion so i'm excited to look forward to that one fortunately we'll not be able to be there in person but i will watch it i will review it so that's it for me let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what were your thoughts on this game let me know what you can talk about and discuss all that good stuff leave a like and subscribe for your lightning night reviews i'll see you guys in the next game peace out